country has a rich Christian heritage filled with faith and spiritual revivals, held in tents, lake, and riverside camp meetings with old-fashioned Holy Spirit-filled preaching and worship. In this true spirit and tradition of the past, Dove Broadcasting presents a special tent revival camp meeting. You must receive Christ by faith as your Lord and Savior. I'm going to ask you to come quietly, silently, and stand reverently in front of this platform before the cross of Christ, symbolizing the fact that you're renouncing sin. And now, join us on the grounds of the WGGS Studios as Nightline presents our Tent Revival Camp Meeting. Hey, good evening. Welcome to Tent Revival. This is our second night. I'm Dante Thompson, and we got a great program lined up for you tonight. I uh, got great music, Joshua Hawkins and Hannah Clayton, and uh, our speaker tonight is going to be Coy Barker. This is our second night, and I want to encourage you to come on out. We still got plenty of daylight left, and uh, of course, we'll, we'll under the tent. We got the lights, so that doesn't really matter. But come on out and be part of this. We have plenty of chairs. I want to give the rundown real quick for the rest of the night before we turn it over to Josh and Hannah to do a couple of songs. Uh, tomorrow night we got Bill Montgomery, and Thursday night we have Dr. David Gallimore, and then Friday night we have Daryl McLaren from Asheville. And so it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful tent revival the rest of the week. You don't want to be, uh, don't want to miss it. You definitely want to be a part of this. So but right now we're going to go to Joshua Hawkins. He's going to be doing a song for us. That the Bible says will lead you on Well now Jesus said you'll have a purpose When the Spirit it comes down from the throne Well now I'm filled I'm filled with that promise That has brought new life to me Well you see I once I was lost, but now I am found. I was blind, oh, but now I see. I tell you, you must have that fire and Holy Ghost. It gets your prayer wheel turning, and it will keep the fires burning. It's that Holy Ghost experience that you can feel. It'll make you move, make you shout. Jesus name and I'm free from sin and I know that I'm born again well through many toils and dangers oh how he he has brought me through Jesus open blinded eyes he calls the lame to walk there is nothing that God cannot do. Well, there's a time that you must seek Him. Just let Him feel your soul within. He'll cleanse your soul as His greatness fills your soul. And then you Shout, make you cry, cause it's real. Well, I've got my hand in the master's hand. My soul's been anchored in Jesus' name. And I'm free from sin. And I know that I'm born again. I tell you, you must have that, that fire and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 
Thank you, Joshua. Thank you. I wanted to bring my little girls up here. And uh, Avery hadn't been on in a while. And this is Riley. And then my niece, Dwayne's little girl, Hannah. So y'all say little people, hey. Say hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Coy, come on up here, brother. We got uh, Pastor Coy Barker here tonight. It's such an honor to have you here tonight, Coy. I don't have another hand to hammer the mic. <laughs> All right, I got there it. You go. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Well, I'm uh, excited about what the Lord's going to do. Yeah. We had uh, two salvations last wow, night. Wow, praise we God. We had about 70 people out here. Amen. And, uh, uh, Lord Morgan did a wonderful job. Primitive Quartet did a wonderful job. Amen. And uh, it was just a great time. Well, I believe God's up to something great. Yes. And I would encourage you at home to call somebody, tell them to tune in. Yeah. And if you live in the area, get on out here and enjoy the presence of God with us. Because I can tell you, God's up to something. I was born and raised in this kind of environment. I love old-fashioned tent revival where the Spirit of the Lord has freedom to do whatever he wants to do. That's right. And tonight, we're going to be talking about breakthrough. How many beside me needs a breakthrough? Yes. Amen. We're going to talk about breakthrough, how to get your breakthrough, how to enjoy it. And I'm a, I'm a personal testimony that breakthrough works. Yes, sir. That God's plan for his people is freedom. Satan's plan is to try to contain you, box you in, somehow keep you in a little box, but God is in the business of breaking the box. Mm -hmm. And so we're expecting great things. I would encourage you at home, please go to the telephone, yes. call your needs in. I'm telling you, those prayer partners are pumped, ready to take your message mm -hmm. of whatever it is that you have need of. They'll pray with you. I, I can tell you by experience, these prayer partners are the best. And they come ready to minister. So right. please do that. Call some of your friends. Tell them to tune in to WGGS Channel 16. Get ready for a great old-fashioned Holy Ghost blood-bought, right. heaven-sent, hell-chasing move <laughs> of <right>. God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Anybody love Jesus in the house? Yeah. Come on, give him a little shout of praise. Come on out. Bring your friends. Wonderful. Yes, sir. Thank Amen. you so much. So before we have them sing again, will you pray over the service? Amen. Tonight? Let's pray together. Father, we decree in the name of Jesus, this night is a night of miracles. And I thank you, Lord, that nothing is impossible. We pray tonight that every person who's under this tent, those by the tens of thousands who tune in around the world, I just ask you in the name of Jesus, let them reach their faith out. Oh, Lord, I thank you in advance for a great night of supernatural intervention. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody shout it. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Thank you. Come on up, Josh and Hannah. Y'all going to do a couple more songs for us. Thank y'all. Daddy talked about going home Since I was just a babe on my knees They said that nothing compared to what was waiting up there How one day we would finally be free Well, I've never seen it But I keep on believing It will be a place like I never know Honey. 
having trouble with you. Well, I started out seeking salvation. Had a hard time resisting temptation, but I kept on searching till I found you. And I kept on searching, searching. I kept on searching.
great the love that bought me. How great, how long, how long are His arms of mercy? Reached way down to the bottom, picked me up. No problem, ain't God good? No, God's great. God is great. Amen. He's a good God. Carries us away. Are you tonight? Amen. As the world looks upon me, 
as I struggle alone. And they say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart, I'm rejoicing how I wish they above me I've a good place to sleep there's food on my table and shoes on my feet you gave me your love Lord and a fine family thank you Lord for your blessing Lord, I have you, and to me that's all that matters, though the world may not see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me. I've a good place. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. That's good music. Amen. Amen. Stand with me, please, and let's have a word of prayer. And I've got a word that's going to help somebody tonight. Amen. Good to see you under the old-fashioned tent tonight. Does this bring back memories to anybody but me? Oh, I love an old-fashioned tent meeting where you can let your hair down. It don't matter if you shout. Amen. We want you to enjoy the presence of the Lord. You at home, I want you to get on the telephone, and I want you to get your prayer needs in because we believe God's a miracle-working God. And we encourage you to dial that number and let the Lord answer your prayers. Call somebody, tell them to tune in, TV 16, see what God's doing. He's got something special he's going to do. But let's pray together. Father, Thank you for the anointing of your Holy Spirit. We confess openly tonight, except for the anointing, we'd not be able to minister your word. Thank you that this word has power to change the lives of people. And I pray tonight you touch a servant, cause me to be a voice of Almighty God speaking to this people. Change me into another man that I speak as an oracle of God. I take authority over every demonic spirit in the name of Jesus that would try to keep people from miracles tonight. I decree by the authority of Jesus' name supernatural breakthroughs. And I thank you for it. And every believer shout it. Amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles, open them with me tonight to the book of Philippians, the book of Philippians chapter number three. And I want to talk to you for just a little bit on breaking out of satanic containment, 
breaking through a supernatural power of God that can set you free. I'm from the old school. I believe God can do anything. I do not believe there is anything that is impossible with God. I believe that faith is action. I believe that if you're sitting there in your home, you have a need in your life, and you don't pick up the telephone and call 244-1616, then you're not exercising your faith. Faith is action. Faith is you doing something. How many knows God cooperates with man? Can I hear an amen in the audience? God works with man. When he got ready to open the Red Sea, how did he do it? He said, Moses, you stretch the rod out. I mean, he knows he had the power to open it without the rod. But he used man as a vessel. When he got ready to raise Lazarus up out of the grave, he said to Mary and Martha, you roll the stone away. Come on, am I in the right house? There is something we have to do in order to step into the miracles of God. And so I encourage you. I encourage you here, and I encourage you at home. Get your faith into action. Make movement to begin to happen in your hearts and begin to realize God's got a miracle with your name on it. But you got to reach for it. I believe God honors the reacher. I believe when you exercise your praise, you exercise your faith, and you pick up that phone, you call, or the fact that you're under the old ragtop tent tonight tells me God's got something in store for you tonight. I believe, and I've been praying and asking God, whatever needs you walked under this canvas cathedral with tonight, you'll leave with a miracle. If it's something in your family, if it's something in your house, if it's something on your job, if it's something financially, if it's physically, we'll lay hands on you. We still believe God called us to lay hands on people. And the Bible said the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. Amen? Anybody beside me ever been healed by the power of God? Anybody beside me ever had God touch a loved one that looked like was impossible? Anybody beside me ever had God move in ways that was beyond your understanding? Yeah, we're in the right place. I'm believing tonight God's going to do a supernatural breakthrough. The Apostle Paul penned these words, it's believed from a jail cell. And he said in verse number 10 of Philippians chapter number 3, he said that I may know him. Look at your neighbor and say it's time to really know him. It is time to really know him. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a relationship. I believe it's time for God's people to really get to a place where they know God intimately, where God knows your name. I'm not talking about a God that doesn't know you. The Bible said he knows the number of hair that's on your head. He knows how many hairs went down the, the drain today when you took a shower and washed your head. He had to take a new total, but he did. God knows in his, his great master plan, God knew that you'd be here right now in this place reaching for a miracle, reaching out for something to happen. Nothing operates by happenstance. Paul said, I want to know him. Now, you're talking about a man that was on a road riding a beast with orders in his pocket to hurt the church. And the Bible said the Lord, the angel of the Lord, showed up. He ended up on the ground. When he got to the ground, he looked up and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? He had met the Lord on the road. It doesn't take a, a cathedral with stained glass and a cathedral with a piped organ. God will meet you at your point of need. He'll meet you in your car. He'll meet you in your home. He'll meet you wherever you are. I'm glad to tell you as a backslidden young man who had lost my wife and my mother in a car wreck, which I was driving the car out of the confusion of the enemy, I walked away from the Lord for nine months of my life. In that short period of time, God kept dealing with me. 
How many knows God loves the backslider? God loves the backslider. Talking to somebody listening by the means of television. God loves the backslider. He wants to bring you back into his fold. And I wasn't in a fancy building when I come to renew my relationship with God. I came and, and got my little mail out of the mailbox. And I won't even tell you the name of the community in Mineral Wells, Texas, because it embarrass you if I said the name of it. But it was a not a beautiful place. I was just a, a, a young man. This tragedy happened. I lived in Oklahoma. I took my brother four years younger than me, moved to Texas, went through a short period. I couldn't hook up with the church. I, I backslid, got away from the Lord, but I opened my mailbox, box, took out a letter, and in that little letter from my pastor's wife. Now, my pastor had started pastoring me, Dr. Donaldson, now lives in Oklahoma City area, and he had, his wife had got up and penned me a little letter. And in that letter, she said, Coy, I don't know what's going on with you, but I know that God's hand is upon your life. And I want to tell you, I wasn't at church. I wasn't, I, there wasn't a B3 organ playing behind me. It was the voice of God speaking through that letter from Sister Donaldson. Still brings something up in my heart when I think about it because she was a vessel a mother of four children, yet she got up in the middle of the night, had tear stains on the little letter, and said, I just want to tell you, I love you. Pastor Donaldson loves you, and God loves you. And whatever you're going through, know that God is going to make a way for you. And I want you to know it changed my outlook on life. I walked into my little apartment, knelt down in my little apartment, and I, I began to cry out. I said, God, I don't even know how to start the prayer, but I'm sorry. And would you have mercy on me? Would you cleanse me by the blood? I don't know why I feel this so strong. I'm, I know right now God's talking to a backslider. God's talking to somebody. You know in your heart you're not right with God. You're not playing games. You're a person of integrity. You're not playing games. You know I'm talking to you. I want you to call that number and say, Coy Barker's talking to me tonight. I am not a, a, a person living the way I should be living. I have sin in my heart. I want to tell you, God's about to wipe that sin out of your life. He's about to cleanse you by the blood that was shed at Calvary, and he's going to change the pain into a miracle. He's going to take your mistakes and make them into miracles. He's going to turn your life around. I feel the anointing. I feel the power of God. God's about to set a single mother free. You've been hurt. You've been re-hurt. You've, you've wondered in your heart, God, where are you at? God showed up right now by his spirit to change your life. Does somebody feel the anointing in the house? God's come to make a difference in your life. The presence of Jehovah is in the house. Paul said, I want to know him. And I can tell you when I hit my knees in my little old apartment, I said, God, I'm not seeking a preacher's handshake. I'm not seeking after church membership. But God, I'm seeking a relationship. I want to know you in my pain, in my sorrow, in my aching heart. God, will you show up? And can I tell you, he left the starry staircase of glory, tiptoed down the stars, stopped into my little apartment and healed my broken heart and changed me by the power of Almighty God and his blood washed me clean from that day to this. I've had a relationship with Jehovah. I've had a relationship not under condemnation, a relationship of his love, his grace, his mercy. Can I tell somebody, his grace is reaching for you. God, I feel the anointing. I feel something going on. His grace is reaching through this camera. I want some believers to pray right now in this tent. God's about to change somebody's life. Even somebody that almost gave up, God's got a hook in their jaw, and he's pulling them. He's bringing them into that relationship tonight. The problem we have in America, let me just touch on it, on knowing God. If you're going to have a breakthrough, 
If you're going to have a supernatural intervention of God, if you're going to have that genuine move of God where you come to know God, listen to me, saints. If you're going to have that, you have to understand he's personal. And you've got to approach him personal. I'd love to shake your hand. I'd love to pray for you. That's not really the most important thing. The most important thing is that you allow him to reach his big arms around you and really draw you into a place of intimacy, into that place where he can communicate with you. And the apostle Paul said, I want to know him. I want to have an experience where I know him. Now you're talking about a man that was already preaching the gospel. He was already doing the work of the ministry. He was in a jail pinning two-thirds of the New Testament. Yet he said, I want to know him. You know what that says to us as saints? We need to every day say to God, I want to know you. I want to know you intimately. I want you to talk to me. How many knows God still talks today? I said, how many knows God still talks today? God still speaks. He'll use a preacher. He'll use a song. He'll use a prayer. He'll use the Bible. But God will still talk to you today. He will speak directly into your heart. Paul said, I want to know him. Now listen to me. We have an identity crisis in America. In the church. I said in the church. In the church. People gone to church. Signed a membership card. But never have had an intimate relationship with God. So they can't have an identity. So the devil and the forces of darkness pin them in, put them in containment, keep them from breaking forth to what their destiny is, what their high calling of God is, and keep them boxed in. I hear the voice of God saying, it's time to break out tonight. I said, it's time to break out. It's time to shake off the heavy bands. It's time to lift holy hands unto God. It's time to say, God, be God in my life. The Bible said that he said, God, I want to know you. See, the only way I really know who I am is I got to know him. If I don't know him, I don't really know me. Until I know him, I'll never know why God created me. Because God created me, he created you for a purpose. Every person listening home, God created you for a purpose. You're not just aimlessly going through life. Your identity in the kingdom is connected to a God purpose. You're connected to a God destiny. The dream that's in your heart, that's a God dream that he put in your heart as a believer. But you got to know who you are. Now listen to me. I was reading today, I love the story of Exodus. How many loves the book of Exodus and coming out of slavery and coming out of bondage? I was reading that today. How the devil had a little box built around Moses. How many knows Moses tried and failed? You know, I've said a lot of times, if I was writing the Bible, I wouldn't write everything God put in the Bible. I wouldn't have put in there where David had an adulterous affair. I wouldn't have put that in there. He was a leader. I wouldn't have put in there where Moses missed God, killed somebody, and then ran off out of the will of God. I'd have left that out. I'd have had him saved where the alligators couldn't get to him. Then I'd have had him raised in Egypt in the palace with a pleasure of the devil's money taking care of him, hiring his mother to take care of him. That's a miracle in itself. Of all the women in Israel, and Moses' mother was hired to take care Come on, somebody. Now, you think God is not a mighty God that, that when Pharaoh got to, ready to hire somebody to nurse Moses, out of the tens of thousands, he chose Moses' mother? So even though he is in the palace, she had him in her arms rocking him. Have you ever heard the, the, the person that rocks the baby rules the world? Come on, mamas. Moses' mother had him, rocking him, telling him, 
You may be here in the palace, but you belong to God. You may be taught by the Pharaoh's courts, but you belong to God. Don't ever forget who you are, Moses. You're God chosen. You're chosen to be a leader. Can I tell somebody, it doesn't matter where you are tonight, there's a God that's put his hands on you and he's guiding you even through the pain, the, the failure, the mistakes. He's still a God that knows how to turn it around for you. He's still a God that knows how to make miracles happen. When the world gives up, everybody else gives up, God will make a way where there is no way. I'm about to shout. I said God will make a way where there is no way. You know the story. Then the Bible said, Moses fled from Egypt. He was born a Hebrew, raised and educated an Egyptian, ended up in a Mennonite community. There he married one of the wealthy people's daughters. Now you talk about an identity crisis. Born a Hebrew, chosen by God, raised in a palace of the Egyptians. Called to be an Egyptian son by Pharaoh's people. But then he ends up in a wealthy Mennonite home. Now you talk about, he had three different identities going. But the identity that was about to win, God was about to show up. I'll skip forward Exodus 3. The Bible said Moses is, is out wandering around, watching over the sheep, enjoying his wife, his new family, they's having a family. The things were going great. He had been in line to take over all the wealth of his father-in-law. Jethro had everything going his way. And all of a sudden, y'all remember this? He looked and there was a bush on fire. Anybody remember that from Sunday school? There was a bush on fire. That wasn't unusual except the bush wasn't burning up. Am I in the right house? How I many knows God still knows how to make a bush burn and not burn up? Somebody in here is that bush burning, but you hadn't burned up. You've been through some stuff. You've burned some a few times by the enemy, but you're still standing. Anybody still standing in the house? Anybody at home still standing? My God, testify. I'm still standing. I've been through some stuff. I've been through some situation, but I'm still standing. I'm going to stand on the word. I'm going to stand on the promise. I'm going to break out into what God has for us, and nothing's going to stop us now. Am I in the right house? Do I have anybody else? Made up your mind. You're going to live your life. The Bible said, now watch this. Moses was having an identity problem. In the midst of the bush burning, the Bible said he turned and looked at it again. I kind of feel like this old tent meeting is a burning bush. And God's going to have somebody turn and look. It's not the normal nightline program from the studio. It is old-fashioned tent revival. You can fan from the heat. You can fight the bugs. It's okay. This is old-fashioned revival. But the Bible said, in the midst of all of the fire burning, the bush not burning, how many knows the Bible said there was a voice spoke out of the burning bush and said, Moses, no, wait, 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 Moses, Moses. How many knows he said it twice? Anytime he says it twice, he's talking about covenant. How many knows you have a covenant with God? We have a covenant with God. If he was calling me, he wouldn't just say coy. He'd say coy, coy. I'm talking to you. I'm in relationship of covenant with you. And the Moses turned back around and said, Yes, Lord, what is it that you have for me? And God said, It's time for your destiny. It's time for you to fulfill what you've been called to do. And he said, God... How do I, as a failure, go back? Pharaoh's looking for me. He knows what I did. He's got a price on my head. And God said, that Pharaoh's done dead. Can I tell somebody, 
The enemy that had attacked you before, God's already taken care of that enemy. The enemy that tried to stop you before, that enemy's done gone. I wish I had some help, I'd preach. If you can understand, that enemy is dead, gone. Somebody ought to shout. It ain't coming back. Moses, listen to Moses. He's having an identity problem. If you're going to have a breakthrough, you've got to solve that problem. Here's what he said. Who am I to tell Pharaoh has sent me? And in Exodus 3, God said, tell him, I am that I am has sent you. You know what that's saying? I'll be what I have to be to take care of business. Can I tell somebody there's a word from heaven coming from a country preacher tonight to tell you I will be what I have to be in order to take care of your needs, says the Lord to you tonight. I will heal you if you need a healer. I'll be your bread if you're hungry. I'll be your water if you're thirsty. Come on, somebody. I'll be a friend if you're lonely. I'll be a companion who'll stand by your side. I am that I am hath called you. He said, you just tell him I am that I am. Folks, if you're going to have a breakthrough, you've got to get in that kind of a relationship where you know that he is God and that he's going to make a way where there is no way at all. I feel so strong. Somebody's watching. Just pray a minute, saints. Somebody's watching right now, and somebody's told you it's impossible. I don't know if it's a doctor. I don't know if it's an attorney. I don't know who it was, but I've come with a raspy voice tonight to tell you there's a God in heaven that's saying to you, nothing is impossible. Somebody pray with me in this audience. Just for about two minutes, and I'll, I'll wrap this message up. God is talking to you. You need to pick that phone up, dial that number, 244-1616, and say, it's my time. It's my moment. This is my time. Somebody's there. I'm talking to somebody. You know you're not right with God. Don't you go to sleep tonight in the condition you're in. You dial that number and say, I'm not right with God. I want to get it right. I want to know God. I want a relationship with God. I'm sick of drugs. I'm sick of alcohol. I'm sick of hurt. I'm sick of pain. I'm ready for a miracle. Father, give them the courage to call. Release them from that bondage and set them free in Jesus' name. Set them free in Jesus' name. Amen. How many believe it out here? Do you believe God's answer in prayer? Amen. Jam those phones out. If you get a busy signal, call back. Hit the redial button. That's why they put it on your phone so you could get through to channel 16. Hit that redial button. And let me tell you, you got to know God. I never will forget many years ago, I was uh, pastoring in a little town called Montgomery, Alabama. Y'all ever heard of Montgomery, Alabama? Cradle of the Confederacy. And I never will forget it. I just got there and took this church and, and just started pastoring this church out on the east side of town, out on Bell Road. and Hadn't been there very long, just a few hours, a few days. And the Lord spoke to me and said, go on a fast. I said, Lord, I like hamburgers. He said, go on a fast. I said, for what? He said, George Wallace, the governor of this state, needs to come back to God. I said, uh, Lord, do you, do you know who you're talking to? I'm a little country boy from southwestern Oklahoma. I don't know anything about politics, much less a governor. And he said, you fast. I'll tell you when to make the phone call. And I said, Fast how long? He said, till I talk to you about making the phone call. I'm going, I love hot dogs, hamburgers, milkshakes. You want me to fast? Well, I became so burdened over that word from God. Scared, yeah. Scared, shaking in my bones. Because I knew it was a mandate from God. I knew it was a voice and a command from God. On the third day of a total fast, nothing but water, the Lord spoke to him and said, dial his office. And if you've ever tried to get through to a governor, you'll understand what I'm saying. I'm a nobody trying to get through to the governor, George C. Wallace. And when I dialed, they put me through a whole litany of secretaries and, 
and another one and another one and another one and another one and finally this little young voice comes on the phone and when this little voice came on the phone she said why do you want to see the governor up out of my belly some of y'all will understand that some of you may not up out of my innermost being I said he's backslid and I'm coming to lead him back to the Lord there was silence on the telephone I thought, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And about that time, I heard weeping on the other end of the phone. And the little girl got her composure, and she said, I'm a little Pentecostal girl, and I've been praying that somebody would not want to see the governor so he could give them something, but so that they could lead him back to the Lord. Because at one time, he had a great relationship with God. And I said, I'm just a country boy from southwestern Oklahoma, and, and, and I'm that person. And she said, well, I can give you five minutes. I said, that's all I need. God works in a hurry. <laughs> I walked into his office. He's sitting over behind his desk. And when I walked into his office, in that huge, big office, that big old desk sitting in his little wheelchair, had his glasses down like this. He looked over at me and said, Sonny boy, what can I do to help you? And I said, nothing. He said, nothing. What are you doing here? I said, I've come on a mission. You need to return to the God of your childhood. You need to return back to Jesus and the love that you had for him as a young man. He fell his head over on his desk and began to weep. Now I'm watching the clock. It's ticking. Two minutes are gone. Three minutes are gone. I'm thinking, I only got five minutes. Finally, I said, Your Honor, Governor Wallace, my time is almost up, and I haven't prayed the prayer with you yet. He looked up. His face was soaking wet. I can see it like it was yesterday. He's in heaven tonight. But I can see it like it was yesterday. He said to me, whose name, sir, was on that wall when you walked in? I said, it said the Honorable Governor George C. Wallace. He said, then I guess I'll tell you when you can leave. And he just dropped his head back over on his desk. I just sat there, waited it out patiently. Finally, he looked up. He said, okay, what do I need to do? I said, well, the first thing you need to do is tell Jesus you're sorry for the sins in your life, and you want him to wipe them clean by the blood of Jesus. He prayed that little simple prayer. I can see it like it was yesterday. The joy of the Lord flowing down his, his face in tears. And he said, now what do I need to do because I feel such peace. I said, the second thing you've got to do is you've got to testify. You've got to tell somebody. He said, well, can I come to your church Sunday and tell it? I said, well, yeah, come on out and tell it. I had no idea. You've got to understand, I'm a country boy. I had no idea what was about to happen. He's, well, he sent all the people out. The feds came out. They crawled in the attic. They crawled under the platform. They was looking for bombs and everything else. I mean, it was a fiasco for days. People begin, the word began to get out. People began to come. Uh, news people showed up. I'm just a, a, a little Pentecostal preacher. I, I'm thinking, oh, Lord, what have I got myself into? He comes that morning. We built a little ramp for him to roll his wheelchair up on the platform. He took that microphone. He looked in that camera. We had it hooked up, and he had hooked it up across the entire state of Georgia to a little state network. And he said, I've come to tell you, many years ago I lay in my own blood and hatred filled my heart. But this preacher came into my office the other day and said he come representing a blood that was much greater than my blood. And said he offered me the cleansing blood of the Son of God. And he took me back to my childhood where I used to to go under the brush arbors of the old Methodist church. And I used to go under the tent meetings with the old Methodist church. And I'd lift my hands and praise the Lord, but I'd got away from God. But I want to announce I am now right with God. That place exploded with a heaven glorious power. Then he looked into that camera and he said, and I'm going to ask the black people of Alabama, please forgive me for all that I've caused you to suffer because I am very sorry and I want you to know how sorry I am. When he said that, I'm telling you, heaven shook and hell began to flee. 
and God began to move in that cradle of the Confederacy. Hundreds of black families got saved. Can I tell somebody, God's about to turn things around. There is an anointing. I feel it like a, a cloud hanging over this place tonight. There is an anointing that's visiting the airways for you to find peace with God. Paul said, I want to know him. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. Can I tell somebody there's still power? If that power could touch a George Wallace, rip hatred out of his heart, do you think he's not big enough to take care of you? Can I tell somebody he loves you, he'll take care of your need? Can I tell you there is a power? He said, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. And then he said, you got to forget your past, forgetting those things which are behind me. Can I tell somebody, you need to have a supernatural eradication of your past tonight. Let the blood of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, the mighty power of God, let it break the chains. Let it loose the captivity and enter into the mighty power of God. My God, I'm talking to somebody. If you're at home and you're bound, you're hurting, you're shackled, get to that phone. Good God Almighty. Don't set, don't wait, 244-1616. He said you got to forget your past. Can I tell somebody, there is no God that's putting you under condemnation. The God I know pulls you out of condemnation. He washes you clean. He will never condemn you. He is a God that convicts and draws you out. There is a convicting power. There's a drawing of the Holy Spirit. God's going to break somebody into a supernatural arena. Can I just talk to somebody? I feel maybe you're under the tent. Maybe you're at home. I don't know which. But I want to talk to somebody. You struggled and you struggled and you struggled and you struggled. Well, I want to tell somebody the end of your struggle is tonight. You don't have to go through another day. You don't have to go through another month. You don't have to go through another year of struggle. The Holy Spirit sent me and my wife, Dee, to tell you there is a way out of your struggle. There is a way out of your pain. There is a way out of what you're going through. And God wants to turn it around for you. But you have to do something. You have to be a reacher. You have to say, God, I know that's for me. I know you're talking to me. I've got to have a miracle. Now listen, listen to me carefully. I got, I got to close. Listen to me carefully. The Bible said, then he said, you got to press. You got to press beyond the opinions of people. You've got to press beyond what the devil's lied to you. You've got to press beyond the hurt of yesterday. You've got to press beyond every religious pain you've been through, the disappointment that you've walked through, the things that people have done to tear your heart up you got to press beyond that. Do you know what? I, I don't know a lot about mothers giving birth, but I've heard them talk. And they always say when they're feeling the greatest pain in that delivery, you know what the doctor tells the nurses to tell them? Push. They're about to have the baby. They're in intense pain. And then somebody says, push. You don't want to push when you're in that pain. But the way to deliverance and the way to the miracle is you got to push. It's the very fact that you went through something to get here. The very fact that you're listening by the way of television or you're listening by the way of, uh, of maybe the internet around the world. You're listening right now to the voice of the Holy Spirit. God saying it's your time to push. And if you've dialed 244-1616 and the number was busy, push, push. Don't you dare back up and say, well, I guess, no. you got to push and you got to push until the miracle happens. I'm talking to somebody right now. you got to push. I never will forget I was preaching in Jamaica. We was back in what they call the bush country. Somebody had run over a pole that had the transformer. The lights were out. When I got there with the pastor, there was no lights. He had a little, little candle. 
The place was so full there was standing room only outside. People standing around the windows. And he said to me, can you preach without a microphone? Can you preach without lights? I said, I'm here on a divine command of God. You just point me in the right direction. So he had me walk up to the pulpit. He introduced me. I began to share the word of God just like I've done tonight. The anointing, I sensed it the same old-fashioned way tonight. I sensed that special touch of God's spirit just like I've felt so many times. So I start a prayer line. They walk through. I pray for them. They go out the back. They keep coming in the front, going out the back. All of a sudden, a little mother holding a baby. Some of you have heard me tell this story. She's holding that little baby in her arms. She walks up to me, and the little candles are burning on each side of the pulpit. And I say, ma'am, what can I do for you? She said, I walked five miles pushing up this mountain because I seen a little piece of paper that said miracles were in this place tonight. And I brought my crippled baby. All of us, the limbs were twisted in the little body, the little legs, the arms, the hands. She said, in Jamaica, and I'm poor, this child will not live very long. And I looked at that baby and my heart just broke. And I said, Jesus, you know I can't do anything, but you can do all things. And she said, here, hold my baby. And she placed it in my hands. And I took that little baby, that twisted up body, and I held it up before God like this. And I said, God, please heal this baby. Honor this mother's face. She's pushed. She's pushed. And she got here. She's wet with sweat. She's had to stand for the whole service. Now would you heal this baby? And I felt that baby jump in my arms. I brought it back down from over my head into the light of the little candle. And when I brought it down, every limb of that baby had been made whole by the power of the living God. I don't know why I feel so strong about telling you that story tonight, but somebody's got to know he's still a miracle worker. He'll heal your child. He'll touch your family. He'll heal your body. He'll change your life. God's in the miracle business. I want everybody on the tent to bow your heads just a moment. And first of all, I want to talk to you at home. I want to speak to your heart. I want you to listen by the Holy Spirit to me. I want you to listen to what God's saying. Look me in the eyes. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because this is a miracle moment when God's wanting to turn things around for you. God's expecting you to use your faith. I said to you at the beginning of the service, God expects you to do something. God expects you to use your faith. Paul said you can know God. You can know Him in power. Now, I'm talking to so many tonight. So many of you, so many of you. I hear the Holy Spirit saying there's many of you that your heart's not right with God. You have a desire. That's why you're watching this program. You have a desire to be right with God. You have a hunger in your heart to really know God. Well, the Holy Spirit had you tune across for this moment. Now, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. And then I'm going to pray for these precious saints that come under the tent. But you're there and you know in your heart you're not right with God. It's not a long, fancy prayer. It's a prayer I prayed in my home and God changed my life. But I want you to pray it like this. Pray it like this. Say it out loud. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to bring your blood. Wash me clean. I want my sins to be behind me. I make you the Lord of my life. From this day forward, I will serve you. My past will be behind me. In Jesus' name. The Bible said when you prayed that prayer, heaven responded. God touched your life, but you need to testify. It's real easy here. The number on your screen, 244-1616. Call and tell them. I just prayed a simple prayer with Coy Barker. I just prayed a prayer with that preacher preaching. And God just changed my life. You can give them your first name. Whatever they ask you for, it'll be to help you. There's a little booklet that Dr. Jimmy Thompson wrote. 
that we'd like to send to you called The Next Step. And I want you to have it. It's a powerful book that will really get you moving in the right direction. So call. Go to that phone right now. With your heads bowed in this audience, would you allow me just a moment to speak to your heart? I hear the Holy Spirit saying there's some of you that the enemy's really tried to push you down, tried to torment your mind, tried to cause you to give up on your miracle. But I come to tell you tonight, God's about to give you a breakthrough. Things are about to turn around in your home. Things are about to turn around in your situation. And I just want to pray for you. With your heads bowed, your eyes closed, I'm going to count to three. And if you're here, you say, Coy, pray for me. I really need a breakthrough. I need God to do something awesome in my life. I just want to pray for you. I won't embarrass you. That's not the way I operate, but I do want to pray for you. When you lift that hand, that's a reaching. When you lift that hand, that's an exercise of faith. You say, I'm here. Would you pray for me tonight? All over this room, one, two, three. Hold it up. Hands are already going up. Just up and down. I'm not going to embarrass you. Just up and down. Could I ask you to do one more thing? Would you just stand? Don't come down here. Just stand right where you're at at your seat. If you lifted your hand, I just want to pray for you. Just stand. I want to ask the Holy Spirit. I just feel God so close. I feel heaven just bending low over this tent. I sense the anointing and the power of the living God. I believe God's about to turn some things around. You that are still seated, would you be kind enough to stand and put your hand on someone that's already standing just as a point of love and a point of contact? The Bible said if two of us agree together, it shall be done. Oh, I feel God healing situations tonight that have seemed impossible. I hear the Holy Spirit doing an awesome work in somebody's situation. I actually can hear chains falling that have held you in bondage. A hurt that somebody received a long time ago. The healing oil of Jesus is pouring into that tonight. And I want you to reach out and touch them in the name of Jesus. Just put a hand on their shoulder. Show them your love and prayers. And Father, we just come together under this tent tonight. We're here for one reason and one reason only. That's to exalt your name. We're not here, God, for any other thing. We're just here so your name could be highly praised, so your name could be magnified. But, Father, there's needs under this old gospel tent tonight. There's needs that only you can meet. They can't find it here. They can't find it there. They can't find it somewhere else. But, God, tonight, You've taken notice of their hand of faith. You saw them as they lifted that hand, as they stood in faith. Now, God, I'm asking you to touch them. In the name of Jesus, send your power into their life. Let your anointing permeate, penetrate. Do a mighty work by your supernatural. God, wrap your mighty arms around them tonight. Wrap them arms around them tonight. Hold them close to you. Let them know that they're special in your sight. Let them know how, how powerful you are to them. In the name of Jesus, I break every live hell off of your life. In the name of Jesus, I come against every demonic spirit that would try to hurt you or keep you in bondage. Be free. Let it go. Give it over to God. Now I ask that the blood of Jesus cover them that the blood of Jesus cover them. Let your Lordship reign over their life tonight. Father, show yourself mighty in their behalf. We give you praise for it in the name of Jesus. If it doesn't embarrass you, won't you just slip your hands up and just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done in my life. Thank you for what you're doing in my family. Thank you for what you're doing in my physical body. Thank you for what you're doing in my heart tonight. Thank you, holy God. We worship you, almighty God. We worship you tonight. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for your dominant presence tonight. Have your way, Holy Spirit. And we give you praise for it. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. You may be seated. We're going to continue to worship. Let me just say to you, 
that are calling, please keep calling. If you're that person that God's changing your heart tonight, please go to that phone. Call that number, 244-1616. Let somebody reach out to you in love. We'll be back again before we say goodnight to you. But thank you so much. Continue to worship. Coy, there you are calling, and we've had a lot of people get saved tonight. And I just brought these in, but they're still on the phone. The phones are off the hook. Just ringing, ringing, ringing. People are getting saved. You can hear them, and they're walking them through the sinner's prayer tonight. Hallelujah. So but here's a lady in Greenville get, uh, 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 making that decision tonight. Hallelujah. Here's uh, Peggy, uh, Alice, uh, Maggie. Elaine and Easley, Thank you, Father. and then another gentleman here that's rededicating his heart to the Lord tonight. And we got a lot of people calling Somebody in. Somebody give the Lord a hand that clap of praise. And they're still calling in. When I, when I just walked out here, they were walking them through that, that, that salvation Keep message. Keep calling. Keep right. calling. Yes. We're going to have some yes. wonderful music. Man, y'all did good up. tonight. Let's sing and enjoy the presence of the Lord.
of a mighty rushing wind. And it's closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call. And at the midnight cry, we'll be going home when Jesus steps out. It's going to be a good day. I look around me. I see prophecies fulfilling and signs of the time. They're appearing everywhere. I can almost hear the Father as he says, Son, go get your children. And at the midnight,
Boy, we've had more people call in in the last few minutes getting saved. Here's John in Greenville, Hallelujah. Virginia, Cal Pins, Helen and Anderson, wow. amongst all the other prayer requests that we've gotten, and a praise report. There's one in here somewhere. There it is. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. I says, I really got healed tonight. Praise God for my healing. Thank Hallelujah. you, TV 16, for all you do. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Amen. Before we get... Uh, uh, going any further, I want to bring all the ministers up here yes. and gather them gather around and pray over yeah, all these absolutely. prayer requests. So if I can get all the pastors, all the ministers, come on up here with the stage here. I also would like for us to pray tonight for Pastor Vance. He's a local pastor in this area for many years. Okay. And tomorrow, Pastor Vance will have multiple bypass surgery. Oh, wow. And so they're really not sure how many. They know it would be four. It could be six. Wow. So I want us to really lift him up. He's a great warrior. He and his wife have been such a blessing to this part of the country. So I just want us to pray for him as we pray for these needs. Excellent. Pastors, come on up here. Hallelujah. Give these men of God a great big God bless you tonight. Come on. Put your hands together and bless them for being here. Benny, will you pray over all the requests here and the salvation? This is a glorious night. Thank God for this man of God. Now let's pray right now. We're praying in agreement. Loving Father, so many have called and so many continue to call yes. because of your call on their lives. Yes. There's been healing. There's been victory. There's been rejoicing. And Father, we come with all of these prayer requests. Now, you know, you. you know every name, you know every ache, every pain, and yes. you know that tomorrow's going to be a better day in yes, Jesus' it name. Yes, it is. And we pray, Lord, that as your sun will rise in the morning, that we will rise with greater expectation yes, of what you will do because what you have already done in our lives. These who've been saved, we thank you. They've been added to thank the Lamb's God. book of life. Yes, Lord. And uh, to never, ever be removed. And we give a glory. Hallelujah. There are those who've been healed, those who struggle, yes, those Lord. who are seeking prayer. And so we just place our hands upon these specific prayer requests, believing that you will do a greater work. We believe in miracles. And we pray that the miracles that are needed Lord, with favor, look upon them. They may be young, they may be old. They may be those who are seasoned disciples, those who've just come into the fold over the last few weeks. But Father, you know their need. Hallelujah. Touch them, Hallelujah. make them whole. And so as we submit all authority unto heaven and we give God the glory, Nothing we do, but everything right. you do, right. if we would but avail ourselves and be your vessel, as Coy Barker has been tonight, I pray that as we lift these names, that, Father, you'll touch and remind that you're in the healing business and that you're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That is our prayer. And we make it in the marvelous name, the name of our soon coming King, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. And Benny, they just handed me another salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know. Hallelujah. Love. It's about 10 or 12 tonight. That's great. That's great. So, Coy, I want to thank you for coming. Amen. We're going we're gonna to do a couple more songs. Amen. But I want to uh, give the line up. Bill, don't go nowhere real quick. Um, this is my uncle, Bill Montgomery, All right. and Bill oh, does gosh, the nice. uh, the prayer vigil every uh, first Saturday of the month. Wow! And uh, gonna have it up here this Saturday, Bill. This Saturday. Yes, and something else is gonna happen tomorrow night that we're excited about. What? You're gonna be bringing the word here under this, <laughs> as you called it, the Canvas Cathedral. That's it. I That's like it. that. So, <laughs> That's right. That's but right. looking forward to having you tomorrow yes. night, Bill. Amen. So, um, but the uh, the the prayer vigil uh 10 30 to 4 30 right. this saturday right here in the studio right inside we're gonna have air conditioning amen in there. so <laughs> of course it's not it's not it's bad not out bad. here at all no, it's not but bad. i want to encourage right. you to come out the rest of the week tomorrow night uh my uncle bill montgomery here is going to be preaching and then thursday night dr david gallimore rock springs baptist church 
And then uh, Daryl McLaren from Asheville, North Carolina, to round out the week. So, and we're going to have wonderful music uh, every night as well, as, as we have tonight, yes, haven't we? Yes, it's been great. Haven't we? So, but I want y'all to come up and do a couple of more songs and just sing us out of the program. Coy, I want to thank you so much Amen. for being here My again. My pleasure. My we love pleasure. You, we sir. love you, This too. is wonderful, wonderful night Amen. tonight. Amen. Come on, beautiful lady.
I never can shout about the love that floods my soul. I must confess, I can't express the feelings deep inside me. But the things I know and I cannot show one day will overflow. I'm gonna let the glory roll when the roll is called in glory. I'm gonna get the sight of myself. As I leave this world, pass the gates of pearl, and stand before my Savior, I'll let my soul, let the glory roll, and from the roll he calls my name. I'm gonna let the glory roll, when the roll is called in glory. I'm gonna get beside of myself, when I get beside the king that day. the 
day when faith shall be sight, the clouds be rolled back as a scroll. 